Hi friends, so today we will talk about localization of parathyroid lesions, anatomical considerations and imaging techniques. So mainly we are going to talk about 4D CT or 4 dimensional CT scan for parathyroid adenoma detection. So what is 4D CT? It sounds fancy but it's only multi-phase uh, CT scan dedicated for the diagnosis and localization of a parathyroid adenoma. When a radiologist is presented with a study for parathyroid adenoma localization, it is generally in a patient who is di biochemically diagnosed with hyperparathyroidism. So the question is usually not that the patient, like whether the patient has hyperparathyroidism, but it's usually where is the pathology or where is the parathyroid adenoma and 4D CT is um, has a lot of advantages which is anatomical localization and uh, detection of multiglandular disease also detection of other relevant pathology in the neck so what the surgeon wants to know from a radiologist is the number, size and specific location of parathyroid lesions with respect to relevant surgical landmarks and the radiologist's opinion and confidence about these particular lesions. The other relevant information that the surgeon is looking for is ectopic or supernumerary parathyroid tissue, concurrent thyroid pathology and arterial as well as uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve anomalies like anatomical variations in these structures. So let us go over the parathyroid glands. They include two superior and two inferior glands and there are less commonly there can be some anatomical variations in their location and uh, knowledge of embryology will help us aid in detection of additional lesions and also anatomic localization since not uncommonly there are numerous parathyroid adenomas or hyperplasia in a person with hyperparathyroidism. The superior parathyroid glands are derived from the fourth pharyngeal pouch and the inferior parathyroid glands are derived from the third pharyngeal pouch. And the migration pathways explain the variable positions of the gland. Another phenomenon is called acquired ectopia. So what that means is uh, the relative superior or inferior position of parathyroid gland does not denote its embryological origin. So sometimes an enlarged superior parathyroid gland will descend into the superior mediastinum. So this phenomenon is called acquired ectopia. And this is not very accurate in uh, saying whether this is the superior or inferior parathyroid gland what helps us more is the tracheoesophageal groove so if you see in the image on the right this uh, enlarged superior parathyroid gland has migrated inferiorly but it is still posterior to the tracheoesophageal groove and hence it is the superior parathyroid gland so generally the superior glands are dorsal to the tracheoesophageal groove and the inferior parathyroid glands are positioned anteriorly. One more thing I want to add is why do we use the tracheoesophageal groove as an anatomical landmark? Because it closely, it mimics the plane of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which we usually cannot see. So tracheoesophageal groove is the proxy for the RLN. So these four images and four different patients are examples of ectopic parathyroid tissue top left image demonstrates retropharyngeal parathyroid gland and top right demonstrates an intrathyroidal parathyroid adenoma. The bottom left demonstrates a mediastinal adenoma and bottom right demonstrates uh, adenoma within the carotid sheath near the angle of mandible. Imaging in parathyroid adenoma is very helpful to the surgeons and radiologists need a certain level of expertise to reliably detect and localize parathyroid adenomas 
so it is imperative that we take our time and effort to get better as there is a little bit of a learning curve here and it is also doubly important in pre like prior surgical candidates like patients who have already had surgery before so what are the two types of surgeries there is um, minimally invasive parathyroidectomy that is mip and the other one is bilateral neck exploration for people with multi uh, glandular disease or in patients on whom adenomas or hyperplasia was not diagnosed on imaging so the surgeon has to do a bne or bilateral neck exploration and try to search for the pathological gland imaging in that localization and not diagnosis because it is generally biochemically diagnosed and uh, various techniques just aid and support the diagnosis like ultrasound nuclear imaging and four dimensional ct and uh, what helps a radiologist is detailed knowledge of embryology and anatomy for accurate interpretation most of us may have performed ultrasound for detection of parathyroid adenoma during our training and uh, it's as you know it's fairly simple straightforward parathyroid adenomas appear hypoechoic on ultrasound and thyroid is relatively hyperechoic uh, but ultrasound also has other advantages it will help diagnose uh, concurrent thyroid pathologies and the need for uh, fine needle aspiration cytology which it can aid and assist nuclear medicine provides functional information and 4D CT provides both anatomical and functional information so this is a diagrammatic representation of the locations of superior parathyroid uh, glands and inferior parathyroid gland so the superior parathyroid glands are usually within the red outline over here and the inferior within the blue outline so as you see on the frontal projection they seem to overlap but on the lateral projection it is clear that the superior parathyroid lies posterior to the recurrent laryngeal nerve or the tracheoesophageal groove which we use as a proxy on cat scan and the inferior parathyroid gland lies anterior to it and uh, hence that helps us determine if it is the superior or inferior parathyroid gland so the goal of 4d ct for parathyroid adenoma detection is accurate um, localization and creating a roadmap for surgical planning and using the appropriate surgical landmarks so as radiologists we tend to use cervical vertebral levels as anatomic landmarks which are not helpful to the surgeon the surgical landmarks that are helpful to the surgeon include the cricoid cartilage the tracheoesophageal groove which is a proxy to the recurrent laryngeal nerve some other surgical landmarks include the thyroid gland like the upper pole lower pole and isthmus and the suprasternal notch um and we should refrain from using cervical vertebral levels uh, as anatomical landmarks also additional information such as uh, thyroid pathology nodules uh, have to be described and variant anatomy of the subclavian artery or recurrent laryngeal nerve and arch of aorta have to be mentioned because those help the surgeon in determining the surgical approach and preventing nerve damage also while interpreting 4d ct um we have to mention uh, certain words which convey the level of confidence we have in uh, this particular scenario for example if we are fairly certain about the pathology being parathyroid adenoma or a hyperplastic gland we have to say something like uh, this lesion posterior to the thyroid gland is consistent with consistent being the key word um, 
consistent with parathyroid adenoma or parathyroid hyperplasia so on and so forth and then if you are less confident you can use words like hyperattenuating uh, lesion on post contrast images posterior to the thyroid gland may be a parathyroid adenoma or parathyroid hyperplasia so may or probably being the words that are used to convey the level of confidence so generally parathyroid adenomas are lower attenuation than the thyroid gland except in patients with chronic hypothyroidism who have less iodine in their thyroid gland so uh, they may be like isoattenuating the parathyroid adenoma may be isoattenuating to the thyroid glands this is like a special circumstance and uh, the classic description of a parathyroid adenoma is that it is uh, hyper enhancing on the arterial phase and uh, demonstrates a washout on the venous phase but this is only seen in like 20 percent uh, patients uh, rest of them are type b and c which we will talk about in the upcoming slides also uh, if there is some other pathology you have to describe it as either being um, associated with the thyroid gland it being a lymph node or a blood vessel and um, extreme caution has to be taken in detecting parathyroid adenomas because uh, not uncommonly they are like they're quite numerous so we have to be careful and not be satisfied with the search so if you find one adenoma um, we have to like sort of keep that in the back of the mind and keep searching for others this is a typical protocol uh, that can be used so point of note is um, it's a, a multi-phase CT scan using a slightly higher tube voltage of um, 140 kvp and um, um, arterial phase imaging at 30 seconds and venous phase at 60 seconds with a slightly higher amount of contrast of 100 cc's and uh, from maxilla to the carina what also helps in uh, proper imaging is like shoulder lowering techniques uh, using traction straps and uh, like or improvised bed sheet placement the third and final thing is to use the right arm as much as possible for contrast administration uh, to reduce the streak and scatter artifacts from uh, like the um, veins on the left side of the neck so we want to reduce that so try to use the right arm so this is the classic description of a parathyroid adenoma on post contrast imaging so the top left image demonstrates um, non-contrast axial scan through the neck demonstrating the left parathyroid adenoma which is hypoattenuating like hypodense and the center image demonstrates arterial phase with hyper enhancing adenoma and the um, top right image demonstrates venous phase with washout this is type a enhancement and it is only seen in 20 percent of patients type b enhancement is uh, different in the sense that the lesion is not hyper enhancing on the arterial phase so it appears hypodense on the pre-contrast isodense with the thyroid on the arterial phase and demonstrates washout on the venous phase type c enhancement uh, demonstrates the adenoma as hypodense compared to the thyroid as usual but it is isoattenuating meaning isodense to the thyroid on both arterial and venous phase as we talked earlier we have to be very careful in detecting multiple gland disease because that is not uncommon so once you find an adenoma like you have to keep searching for additional lesions which are separate from the lymph nodes arteries and uh, thyroid glands so um, also we have to remember that uh, sometimes when you don't see any pathology it is more likely to be multi-glandular disease like parathyroid hyperplasia and 
uh, uh, like a adenoma of size less than 7 millimeter is uh, sort of 88 percent specific uh, specific for multiple gland disease so differentials to parathyroid adenomas um, we know intuitively those are uh, exophytic thyroid nodules or even large thyroid nodules and lymph nodes uh, so uh, what helps us be more confident is the non-contrast images and correlation with ultrasound findings uh, dual energy ct can also help us um, in this uh, situation by um, uh, negating the need for multi-phase imaging so this is an example of multi-gland disease. As you can see, both superior and both inferior parathyroid glands are mildly enlarged. Variations in parathyroid lesions are as above. So top left demonstrates a cystic appearing parathyroid adenoma. Uh, top center and top right demonstrate uh, nodules with um, intralesional fat. And bottom right demonstrates parathyroid adenoma with calcification which is uh, concerning for uh, car parathyroid carcinoma so whenever you see calcification the possibility of um, carcinoma has to be raised and the referring physician has to be uh, informed about this so there is a recommendation on how to approach a 4d ct of the neck and to minimize uh, missing any parathyroid lesions so in searching the superior thyroid uh, parathyroid glands you have to start along the posterior aspect of the upper thyroid lobes and then focus on the retropharyngeal and retroesophageal positions so much like less commonly the superior glands will be located within the carotid sheath or will be intrathyroid or in the scalene fat in the search for inferior glands you have to start adjacent to the lower thyroid lobe and then look along the thyrothymic ligament and within the mediastinum uh, and less commonly the inferior glands will be within the carotid sheath and intrathyroidally so in conclusion what the radiologists can provide to the surgeon and help them plan a great an accurate surgery is the number of lesions the size of lesions precise localization of the lesion and the radiologist's opinion and confidence level like using particular words like um, this lesion is consistent with or using words like this lesion may represent or probably represents if you're less confident and then describing associated uh, pathologies of the thyroid gland if present also mention ectopic or supernumerary parathyroid tissue